Well, it's that time once again, and it's time to jam with Zhao Shur. I'm Zhao Shur, and we are moving steadily towards each of the ends of the 24 solar cycles. And speaking of the end, we are at the end of fall on the Chinese calendar. So we are at the final stage of fall, which is called Shuangzhang. And that is when the weather becomes cold enough for frost and it begins to form in Northern China. So remember, many of these times we are looking at Southern China, but now we're gonna start using our measurement for Northern China because at the end, of fall comes what? Winter. So we start using the northern measurements to now incorporate our experience and the changes that we begin to feel in our bodies over time. So now that we're in that period of Chuanzhang, let's take a look. We are in the fall period. And there's fall one and fall two. And we're now coming from Han Lu. Han Lu was the cold dew. Now we have the frost dew coming down. So as we begin to feel the colder changes, like here in Florida, we're starting to feel the crisp in the air. At night, we're in the 60s, sometimes in the 50s. So for us, that's pretty chilly. Everybody's out there getting their sweaters and doing different things and people in the rest of the country laugh at us. <laughs> so we begin to see how our bodies are now starting to prepare for winter as the pores begin to close and as our circulation goes inward, then what are we beginning to feel? And now how do we make those changes? So we had the start of autumn, which is Li Chu. That started on August 7th. And now we're down to the Shuangjiang, which is the uh, uh, October 23rd on the Gregorian calendar. Okay. So then now we're already three days into it here on the 26th. So as we move forward into this new period, what are you starting to feel already in your area of the country, your area of the world? Remember, all of these things that we're experiencing is in the Northern Hemisphere. So the Southern Hemisphere is just the opposite. As we're moving into winter, they are moving into summer. So they're just finishing up spring and we're now finishing up fall. So as you begin to feel the changes in your body, what is the things that we can do? Now, how do we always measure the change? You always measure the change by the external environment and the high and low temperatures. So like here in Florida, our temperature highs over the last few weeks have been from 84 to 90 to 82 to 79. Now, ten tentatively today, our high is supposed to be 87, which is uh, pretty comfortable for most people around the country. Now, but when you start looking at places like New York, like Shanghai, like Abu Dhabi, Chicago, Montreal, you'll see that their highs are not so high. So if you take a look at New York, their high is 66. And then today their high will be 69. In Montreal, before a few weeks ago, it was 70. And today it's going to be 50 as their high. So as the planet starts to get more cold, 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 and things start to cool down more, you'll see the activity starts to slow down. Then the creatures start to do things to slow down, to get ready for hibernation in certain cases like bears and other things. And you'll begin to see how to prepare for your particular experience with nature. So now as we look at the lows, 
our lows in here in Orlando has been from 79 to 75 to 69 to 68 today. And in places like Montreal, their low goes from 52 to tonight it will be 39. Yeah, 39. So as you begin to actually feel that coldness coming in, we're now transitioning our body day by day. And as you start to transition day by day, you begin to feel that those particular changes, and then now your body is poised and ready to now get your body back into its normal. So when we're taking a look at where we're talking about, here in Florida, we're in the 29th to 31st parallel. As we go across the globe, you'll see it goes through different areas of the globe. So for here, it's Orlando, and just north of that, the 29th parallel is Deland, St. Augustine, and then Brunswick is the 31st parallel. So Brunswick, Georgia. So to the west of us is New Orleans, is Houston, Texas, but to the east of us is places like Cairo. And what that goes all the way through is like Sichuan is in the 31st parallel, Wuhan is in the 31st parallel, and this is all Southern China. So this is where these original readings were from and how they began to adopt these practices and get their bodies ready get their agriculture ready, get all of these different things ready for the different uh, seasonal changes. So when we're talking about the Northern Hemisphere now, where we're taking our measurements from, and as we get closer and closer to winter, we're talking about places like Beijing, Xi'an, or that translates, Beijing translates to us, Philadelphia. Xi'an translates to us, Charlotte, North Carolina, Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is all on the same line. And then Philadelphia and Denver, Colorado. And then just north of that, even in the southern uh, Inner Mongolia area, that translates over to Minneapolis and Portland. And now you can see as those changes are happening, our bodies are now, what, adopting a new functionality, a new type of posture. So where are we? We are in the sixth of the fall or autumn portion of the solar cycle when we look at our circular calendar. And the frost descent has just started. We're just three days into it. So have you started to feel the changes? I know I have as we go out in the morning, it's always a little bit more crisp and cool and you start to feel those particular changes. So after this, we will go into uh, winter, which will be Li Dong. Li Dong is the start of winter. Now, the West will not actually acknowledge winter until we get to the solstice, the winter solstice. So winter has already been moving steadily along <laughs> according to Chinese calendar, long before then. So as we go into the frost descent and we start seeing the frost uh, appear in the north, you know now, prepare. Prepare yourself. So how do we normally go about preparing ourselves? Well, we do it through food. And so the yin-yang nutritional corner that we always have, we always choose two different fruits to now signal to our body what type of things that we need to do to change. Transitioning from the old, meaning the fall, and then preparing for the new as we get closer and closer to winter. So if you are a young body type, and if you don't know what that means, then get body typed, and you can go to my new website, and I am in full-time practice now, and we offer body type services. So then you'll find out if you're a yang body type or you're a yin body type. And with that said, then we're recommending bananas for the yang body types and pineapple for the 
yin body type. So then now, as you know, we use those two examples, banana and pineapple, or whatever the yang fruit is for the week or the uh, other two, every two weeks we do this. So either yang body type or yin body type, depending upon what your body particularly needs. Okay, so now let's talk about banana. So banana can clear heat, lubricate the lungs, lubricate the intestines, lower the blood pressure, helps alleviate alcohol intoxication. So there's many types of functionality to banana. So let's deal with clearing heat. Why? Because we say that banana is cold in nature. So it creates the phenomenon of your body starting to cool down, starting to contract, and now bring everything down from the head all the way down to the feet. So then now as we start getting colder, what does the body naturally do? Produces fluids. And those fluids help lubricate the lungs. Also lubricates the intestines. So then now bringing things downward, clearing heat, and now lubricating, what does the blood pressure do? Naturally starts to sedate. Now, why does it say helps with alleviating alcohol intoxication. Well, when things start getting lower in function, things start to cool down, what is the process of the body making alcohol? Actually, it's a heating process. As we start to manufacture sugar or glucose in our liver, the liver needs heat. It needs yeast, which we get from our natural environment. And then the heat of our body, the 98.6, that allows the body the internal core temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit. That allows the body to heat up and start to manufacture what? Glucose. That's alcohol. So then now as our body starts to cool down, it's in a rest and digest phase. So what? We start to allow, calm down and feel a little sleepy and all of our function begins to slow. So that will help do what? Do more of the chelating process that our body does, our cleansing process, and it will cleanse out any excess sugar in our system. So these are kind of things that you can automatically do to incorporate to your body as a yang type person where you have this tree type fruit, these berries called bananas. And yes, berries, are a bunch of things, a bunch of fruit. And so that's why bananas are considered berries. So then now let's take a look at pineapple. Pineapple. So these are low to the ground fruits. And if you see the actual bush that the pineapple comes in the center, it's a very low to the ground type of bush. So when you see it begin to form, the fruit begins to form in the middle, you can see that, oh, it is a very rich type of, we say yin energy type of fruit. So once it is coming out of the ground and it begins to form, it is rich of that yin energy. And with that yin energy, it can be very raw and powerful. So when you look at raw pineapple, it has to be transformed. So in Chinese medicine, we cook it a little bit to remove the toxicity. Toxicity means that it's too strong, too strong. There's so much enzymatic function that we need to shave it off a little bit by cooking a little bit. So that's why we always try to do that or we do that in Chinese medicine to alleviate any of the strong toxic toxicity. So what does pineapple do? It aids in digestion, and that's its enzymatic activity. When it comes in contact with the body, enzymes go crazy, and the body starts to produce all of this enzymatic activity, and it allows your body to now just start to break things down so fast. So because of that, then now your acidic activity starts to move, and your pH starts to adjust. 
So this is why it can literally check any type of loose stool or diarrhea. So these type of things that is regulating the digestion, this is the very functionality of how pineapple can stabilize. So look at the stable plant that it comes from. You eat it, and then now your body stabilizes. And because it's so tropical, grows in a tropical environment, it naturally does what? For high, hot temperatures, it immediately produces all of this fluid so that your body can cool down. So we say it dispels summer heat. So very high fever, very hot type of conditions. You can use this to clear out your body's reaction or condition. So now we have both the yang and the yin fruit. Now you can go through the process of looking at what your body type is, selecting that, and then for the next uh, two weeks or so, you now incorporate this into your diet and see how your body particularly feels about these fruits. Because wow, you're gonna feel the change, feel what is the different things that we talk about, see if your digestion begins to increase, if you are a yin type, and see if your body begins to cool down and you start to feel more comfortable in your lungs and large intestine if you are a young type. So that is our two fruits for this week. So now let's get into if we have any questions. So let's go to the Q&A. Okay, so doesn't look like anybody's submitting any questions this week. So just remember, I am in full-time practice at Cocoa Beach and Daytona Beach, and we are Affordable Asian Medicine, and you can go to affordableasianmedicine.org. And if you still want to get body typed or any th types of things like that, you'll go to that website, and then you can join me every morning. We still do our daily Dao Yin and our, do our morning workout so I will see you all at 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, and let's get our low-impact, high-energy exercise on every Monday through Friday. And I am Joshua, and I will see you all next time.